we have to add the functionality to call the backend. So we have to run first the backend. Here's our backend. I would have the command python app.py. The backend will start and just let this and we'll be running all this code. What we have to do is to add the functionality to process the image which has been uploaded by the user. Before writing the case for processing the image, we first need to convert the image that has been uploaded by the user into the readable format which can be sent to the backend. So that will provide a function data URL to blob equals data URL. The command will be a constant array is equal to data URL dot split where we essentially contain the data of split. So we will be splitting it to fetch the my match which is at the zero index in this array and match the following characters. Then if not my match we will throw an error that is an invalid mind type. This essentially means that the image was not very successful in reading the image. So if that is successful, the mime and bootstrap usually, the function in atop to create the length of this B string. Now we finally create the blob and return it. So let's put return new blob u8 array, then type mime. Now we have it in the code to convert the data URL. You want to blob. Now that we have written the function to convert the data URL to blob, we can write the handler for when the user presses the process button. Here we define a function, so let's put handle process image. What this function will do is set the loading to true. We have to find the set loading state and we will set it to true so that we give some sort of feedback to the user that we are processing the image that they have uploaded in the backend. After retrieving the data from the response, we will read the image URL and the label from the response. So let's put response.image URL is equal to data colon image backslash jpeg semicolon base 64 and base 64 data image. This is how we read the image URL and we set the process image state that we have defined to this image URL. Then we set the detected label using data dot label and we set loading to false because now we have received the response from the back end and let's set the message. Now we can add the functionality to catch any error. Let's say if the response to JSON was not okay, we will throw an error. So console.error, then insert set loading parentheses false. All right, now that we have written the handling of the case where the user has uploaded an image and pressed the process button, hence requesting the object detection model to run. We can also add one more thing. Let's say the bot has sent a dummy sort of message. Let's say, how can we assist you? So now we are just entering a conversation from the chat bot. Now we can write the HTML elements to display the process button and to show the inferred image. Okay, we are just viewing the image uploaded by the user. Here we can add a button. The button will have the class name and the class name will be equal to button button primary mt3. Then on click, is equal to handle process image function. The text inside the button will be close, right? Now we can show the conditional JSX for loading. When the image is being processed by the backend, we will do this and show a spinner. We can also add the div for the spinner. So div class name is mt4. We add another div so that the class name will be spinner porter text primary and the role is equal to status. Now go ahead and change the same courses to double forms, okay? We'll do the rest of the changes later. Right now at a span, class name equals SR only, okay? And it will be loading. Then we're going to add some text saying image is being processed, okay? Now we have the loading part. We will now show the processed image again. We'll use the similar JSX box. We'll have the condition that if we have received the processed image, then we'll display the following. So we will create a div. You show the processed image, class name equals MT4, and let's add a heading H3. And it will say processed image. The image source is going to be the processed image. The image source is going to be equal to the processed image state we have stored. And the alt text is going to be processed and the class name is image thumbnail. 
we will also show the detected labels under the same div. I can add a nested block of this conditional JSX code. So the detected label. We will add another div, okay? So for this, the class name is going to be MT2. And we will bold the class name. Then we added labels, the detected labels. This will show the processed image and the detected label under the image. Now, let's see how the front page looks like now. Let's rerun this. Let's choose the file so we can see the process. Let's have this image. I just clicked the process button. It is now being processed. As you can see, we have received the inferenced image and the detected diseases right here. All right. Now, we can start working on the chatbot, the chatbot UI on the right side of the web page. Let's do it. The image processing part of our application is complete on the front end. Now we can move on to the chatbot part. Now we kind of need a handler to handle the case when the user sends a message. So let's continue. Let's get a handle send message. Let's put handle send message. If the user input dot trim is equal to an empty string, that is when the user hasn't actually typed out anything and you just press the enter button or click on the send button. We are going to set the warning to press enter a message to let the user know that they haven't entered any message. We will set a timeout for this warning to remove it. The second warning will be set to an empty string. So the warning state will be set to an empty string after 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. <laughs> then we will simply return. If the user has actually entered something, we will have to set chat loading to true. Now, the payload that will be sent to the back end will be this. The message will be user input and the chat history. As you can see here, we have used the set messages to set the state of the message right here. Now, we send the history, which is messages object as well to the back end. Next, we'll make an API call to the URL on which we are calling the back end. So, slash chat as the URL where we have deployed our chatbot. The method is post and the header of this API call is going to be the content type application JSON. The body of this API call is going to be json.stringify parentheses payload. Now, we have defined the API call that will be made to the backend. Now, let's have the response. We will get the JSON object from the response. Then inside the data that we have retrieved from the JSON object, we will use the text messages functions to set the messages state to basically upgrade the messages and to set the chat loading and to give any sort of errors. We'll set the messages and we are going to be setting messages. First of all, the sender is user and they have entered the text, which is user input. Then the sender is bot and the text is data.response. After this successful API call, we can set the user input to empty now. Set the user input into an empty string and set warning into an empty string. We also need to find a handle send message. We will also add a function handle key press. So in case the user presses the enter button instead of clicking the send button on the screen, let's add the area over there. So handle key presses. If one key is equal to enter, call the handle send message button as the handle send message function. Now we will add the UI for the chatbot implementation. So for that, we will do it in a write content div. So let's create a new div for the write content. The class name is write content and now we created it for the chatbot. So my class name is chatbox. For each message in the messages, you write a function. So for that, we will use the SD sure. Here's the script with the times and number placements removed and the synthesis structured together. Now go ahead and change the same courses to double forms, okay? We will do the rest of the changes later. Right now at a span, class name equals SR only. The class name for this element is warning message and the text will be seen in the warning state. To have warning, we will display the paragraph. So the class name for this element is warning message and the text will seem to be in the warning state. The input type is of course going to be text and the value be stored any value and in user input. Then on change, we are going to put the following function, the set user input e.target.value and on key press call the handle key press function. The placeholder text is going to have a message and we are going to put disabled if the image is not processed as chat loading. So if we are processing the image or if we are loading the chat, we want to disable the text input functionality. Now we can also add a button like send button 
So on the click, we will call the handle send message function, send the message from me, and this will be disabled again under the same conditions that the image is not processed or the chat is loading. We will also read the text. So this completes the UI. Let's save this and reload our page. Let me reload it, then select the following image, click on the process on this button, and we can see that we have the detective disease. It says here the detective disease is this, and how can we assist you? Now we can ask you the following question. Let's change the question this time. Tell me about the causes of this disease. I hit enter, and now you can see a lot, and here we had a response. Now I can ask it, how can I prevent this disease? The standard clicks on the button and now you can see we have received the message from the back end. The styling is done. So you can see that the user messages and the messages from the bot. This is the message from the bot. They have slightly different background than the messages sent by the user. So again, you can play around with the UI and the app or CSS file. All right, this completes our application. I hope you enjoy learning and I will see you again in the next project.